Hi guys, what's going on? It's Tubbs here from Fighters Talk TV. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And of course, share it because if you do all three, you're going to be in with a chance to win one of our $50 Amazon vouchers that we're going to be giving away every single month, thanks to my sponsors. Anyway, guys, let's go right into it. Let's talk about Connor Ben. The Connor Ben situation, you know, he, he was caught doping apparently. Um, he's denying it, talking about it was in eggs. You've got people like Spencer Oliver going, fuck off, son. You know, how many eggs do you want to eat a day? You know what I mean? So let's talk about it, right? Um, I want to hear what you have to say. This whole thing is a load of bollocks. Why is it taking the British Boxing Board of Control months and months and months to come out with any evidence other than a couple of failed drugs tests, or I know this sounds bad, right, to say, to say what what's going on, right? Now, if he was caught doping in the sense of, you know, the Gerald Miller type doping, then this would have been out, done and dusted, okay? The fact of the matter is, is it's taking so fucking long. Why is it taking so long? There's a man's career on, I've got a feeling it's going to cost the British Boxing Board of Control a lot of money. Um, Conor Ben's already said he's not fighting under the BBOC uh, uh, anytime soon, which is a shame because, you know, a lot of us uh, athletes, uh, or previous athletes in my case, as you can see, I'm rather lumpy now. Um, you know, a, a lot of us people actually really support the BBOC, do you know what I mean? And, and, uh, and it is a shame. It's just making a fucking mockery of British boxing, isn't it, really, to be fair, let's be honest. So, what do you think? You know, how do you think this goes? How do you think this plays out? I mean, you know, if you've done something, put your hand in the air. Because as soon as you do that in the air, you be the bad guy like Chris Eubanks said for a little while. And then it's done, it's dusted, people watch your fights. You might have to build your career up a little again. I mean, I don't know if you can see that over my left shoulder on your right. That's his dad's glove. It's not given to me. Thank you very much, Nigel. So, um, you know... I've got a lot of respect for him. He's a good, good fighter. You know, I don't believe you needed the dope to beat Chris Eubank. Look at what's just happened with old Smithy. You know, I really, and I think they're far more aggressive than he was. So, it, you don't need to do it. Honest to God, you don't need to do it. You know, if you can't win fair and square, don't do it. it and it goes back to what I've been saying, and I agree totally with Tony Bellew here, right? Anybody who is caught doping, like knowingly caught doping, like Gerald Miller, right, and even if he's proved to be Conor Ben, should be banned from boxing for life. Let me tell you why. It's going to take one fatality due to it. When you've got an animal all pumped up on storage, look at these guys. They eat it, they sleep it, they breathe it. They have absolute bodies of perfection. They are muscularly toned. They're hyper athletes. And it is bad enough that with, with the, the punches to the head. Right? And when you've got someone who's been juiced and the freakish power that that gives them extra, it's only going to take one fatality before the whole sport comes crumbling and brown. And it's not just you, by the way. I'm talking to the drug cheats out there. I'm not talking to Conor Ben. It's not just you. right? Think of all the other fuckers who've been through the ring. And this is what annoys me a lot when I was younger, that, you know, you had juice heads and muscle heads in the gym, and they think they look great. They couldn't take a fucking punch. But you get, you know, it's the ones who can take a punch, and then they go do it. But what annoys me is you put everybody else at risk for your selfishness. Everybody wants to win, I get it. Right, and I'll tell let me tell you the experience, people, when you ever get any climbing those ropes. And it doesn't matter whether you do it amateurly, whether you're just doing sparring sessions, whenever you're doing it professionally, semi pro, unlicensed boxing at the circus tavern, whatever it is, right? Whenever you step through them ropes, you take a risk every fucking time. It takes one bad blow. You've only got to look at the list of boxers over the years that have died or have taken one bad blow. Do you know what I mean? And then they can't want detach retinas and all sorts of stuff. You know? So if you cannot win fairly, don't fucking win at all. I, I, I know everybody likes to win. Everyone really, really likes to win. And Connor, I hope to God you prove me wrong. I have a lot of time for you. Met you a couple of times, you know, running up and down steps in South End and, and all that. You know, you come, you grew up in the same sort of place. I mean, I grew up near where Eddie Hearn lives. You know, he lived in Brentwood. I lived in Chelmsford, so they're right rivals next door. I'm the same age as him. So I've grown up around boxing. I know 
uh, you know, my friends went to school with Coogan Cassius from IFL TV. I boxed with guys like Danny Chain, who's a friend of Coogan's. So I know a lot of people, right? And I know a lot of people. It, and I think all of them would agree with me. You're fucking it up for everyone else. I don't care about your desire to win. I don't care. You are putting every other fucker at risk. And it makes me so angry. Because there ain't a need to do it. Because if you're that good and you're going to make it, you will make it on merit alone and not because you're cheating. Because you put everybody else at risk and not just the person you're getting in the ring with. Yeah, everybody else who lives this sport. We tell the kids of today, put those knives down and pick them gloves up, right? That's really important. I don't know, I'm probably going off and around again. What's this silly fuck? Fuck no, listen, let me tell you something. Put those gloves down. Sorry, pick those knives down and pick those gloves up. We're telling the kids today to do that, to make them into better human beings. And you make a fucking mockery of that. You're telling them it's all right to cheat with drugs. Listen, Gerald Miller, when he was going into the Anthony Joshua fight, okay, he was a big baby Miller. He outweighed Joshua by about five stone, I think. Right. And when you look at Andy Ruiz, and uh, why you look at Andy Ruiz and you look at Big Baby Miller, right? Two big heavyweights. Andy Ruiz, chubby puppy. I've got so much heart for that guy. So much heart for him. Because he's he's he done what he's done on merit alone. Big Baby Miller, you just put a mockery on it. You should never be allowed to lace up a pair of gloves. Ever. Ever. I, I, I purposely look at people like him and think, you are making it so bad at it. You're t- what, what message are you passing on? You know, I mean, I know people, we recently, you know, held about, <coughs> sorry, heard about Kel Brook, and we know about, you know, the tr- struggles that Ricky Hatton's been through, we know about the struggles that Tyson Fury has gone through, and, and all of that, and, they, and mental health is a real big, big, big issue. But what, their struggles are completely different, they didn't try and cheat nobody, they didn't try and hurt nobody, they had a mental health issue that took the best of them, and all of them, apart from Kel Brook, and I hope he does, and sincerely from my heart, have come through it. We all go through difficult times. And I talk to people like Connor Ben, and I talk to people like Big Baby Miller, and all the other cheats over the years, and ask you the question. I know at the time you want to win, but it's conscience. Could you have a death on your conscience? This sport is bad enough when people die when it is one of the things we live and love what we do we live and love what we watch as a fight fan as an ex-fighter who's someone who loved being in the ring I was never any good but as someone who loved it and liked being around it and loved talking about it and loved watching it it just hurts it just hurts because guys look you don't need to do it the desire to win should never come blind beyond the health of another man or woman. Anyway, guys, <coughs> I know I've ranted on and raved on a little bit, and we're going sort of in about eight, nine minutes now. You've already not, you've already twitched off about like eight, nine minutes ago. But if you haven't, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and share. Get your chance to win fifty dollars or fifty pounds if you're in the UK of Amazon vouchers by our sponsors. And there is two to give away at the end of every month. And uh, all I say, peace out. Thanks a lot, guys. Bosh.